solubility and concentrations. So now that we've talked about what a solution is, um, we can look at how do we classify them and how do we measure how strong a solution is. Um, solubility is the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in a given solvent at a fixed temperature. Typically the temperature will be fixed at 20 degrees Celsius. Um, we'll write this as the number of grams of solute per 100 grams of solvent. So if you look it up, somebody will say the solubility of sodium chloride is 32 grams. Uh, what they mean is there are 32 grams of sodium chloride that will fit in 100 grams of a solvent such as water. There are three different saturation levels that a solute and solvent can have. The first one is saturated, meaning that it can no longer hold any more solute. Some solute will typically be on the bottom of the beaker. Uh, that's how you know that it is saturated. No more can go in. Uh, the opposite of that is unsaturated, meaning that it cannot hold, or excuse me, meaning that it can hold more solute. Um, you cannot typically see the solute on the bottom of the beaker because it has dissolved into the solution. It's gone into the solvent. The third type of solution is supersaturated. Now a supersaturated solution is holding more solute than it should. This is typically done by heating the substance so that it's warm, there's more space between the solvent particles. And because there's more space between the solvent particles, more solute can get in to those spaces. Now an example of this that's very common is sodium acetate. In the picture we have three beakers of sodium acetate. This is the same beaker pictured three different times. The first one shows a clear solution. You cannot see the sodium acetate. It's in solution. It's heated up. Now if we let it cool down and we put what's called a seed crystal, uh, we just drop a crystal in to start the crystallization process, uh, we will start to see some of the solid form and after a little while the uh, sodium acetate that's in excess has come out of solution and formed a solid. Uh, measuring the concentration. There are three different ways we can measure the concentration of a solute in a solvent. We can do a percent by volume, meaning we have milliliters of solute divided by milliliters of solvent times 100 to make it a percentage. We can figure out a percent by mass. The grams of solute divided by the grams of the solvent times 100 to get a percent by mass. The third one is molarity. Molarity is the moles of solute per liter of solvent. Now we are not going to talk about molarity very much um, in this class, that's something I like to save for your chemistry class because we spend much more time talking about what a mole is, um, doing calculations with moles before we get to molarity. So let's back up to percent by volume. Let's say I put 20 milliliters of a solute with 100 milliliters of a solvent. 20 divided by 100 is 0.2 times 100 is 20%. Now let's say we have 30 grams of solute and we put it in 100 grams of solvent. 30 divided by 100 is 0.3 times 100 is going to give us 30 percent. So that's just a couple of quick examples of how to calculate the concentration. There are three factors that will affect solubility. Uh, the first one is polarity. Remember because some of the elements are a little greedy about sharing electrons, they will have what's called a dipole, meaning that one side of the molecule has a little positive charge, the other side has a little negative charge, creating two poles, just like the north and south pole of the Earth. Um, like dissolves like. If you have something that's polar, it's going to dissolve things that are polar. Sugar is an example of a polar molecule. Um, so is water so sugar will dissolve in water. Um, oils are nonpolar. They do not dissolve well in water. So likes dissolve like, polar dissolve, dissolves polar, uh, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. Temperature. 
Uh, the warmer something is, the more stuff it can dissolve. And pressure. Typically, uh, we don't think of pressure as having an effect on the solubility of something like sodium chloride in water. However, what about oxygen and carbon dioxide, um, other gases being dissolved in water? That's what allows fish to breathe, is the dissolved oxygen in water. If you have an aquarium, you might have to make sure that you have an aerator to make sure there's lots of dissolved oxygen in the water. Um, if we have a high pressure, it's going to push more of those air particles into the solution. Uh, if you think about carbon dioxide and pop, we have to pressurize the carbon dioxide to force it into the pop to make it carbonated.